right, everyone, welcome to TIS. Come on in and we'll start the school tour. So we'll uh, join back with the track and the gym space um, on the way out, but if you follow me to the lobby, um, we'll get introduced and acquainted to the school. All right, everyone, welcome to Tokyo International School. And when you arrive, this is our lobby area. Um, you'll be able to see what's going on in the school most recently on the video screen. Um, and we believe that when we share our message with the community about what it is we're learning and how we're learning, it helps our students to grow and learn. As an introduction, I'm Joey Koffeld. I am the primary vice principal here at Tokyo International School, and we welcome you. So let's go, follow me. On our way, and as I mentioned before, um, documenting learning is something that's very valuable for our teachers and for our students as learners. Being able to see themselves as learners and show their growth is very, very important. And at TIS, we have a vision and we have a mission. And what this board shows is the Kindergarten 2 class, and they have taken some big ideas, some big concepts that the school really believes in. And they've thought to themselves, how do I show confidence? How can I be an inquirer? How can I be an independent thinker? And how can I improve? So what you'll see here is a process of goal setting um, based on our mission here at TIS. And that's starting with our five and six year olds. Imagine how it looks as we go up the ladder towards eighth grade. So continue following me. All right, and we're still on our way to the kindergarten one and kindergarten two classes. But before we get there, I'd like to introduce to you our curriculum. So we are a primary years program, International Baccalaureate School. And as that's the case, we have what's called a program of inquiry. This program of inquiry shows what students will be learning across the grade levels and throughout the grade levels. So what you'll find is um, they are organized by six big themes. And what some brilliant researchers decided was that anything that is worth knowing falls into these six categories. So when we talk about who we are, we're talking about our identity, what it is to be a human. When we talk about where we are in place and time, we're thinking about history and the future geography, and um, how we fit into the bigger picture. We talk about how we express ourselves. We're thinking about the arts. We're thinking about how do we sing a song, dance a dance, um, and show our learning in different ways. How the world works is our units all about science and thinking about what it is that makes us, uh, as humans on Earth, able to do the things we're able to do. How we organize ourselves is all about the systems and structures that humans create and the natural ones that already exist. And finally, we have sharing the planet. And sharing the planet is our um, interaction with the living um, natural environments around us. So when you look at the whole scope of a year, you have all of these different subjects. And what's really beautiful is that in the PYP, we try to bring them down all together. So, for example, if we are hoping that we can share the planet respectfully and we can live with the animals around us, we can learn about that through our reading. We can share our ideas through our writing. We can tell everyone our opinions about this and try to convince others. We can create posters in art that demonstrate our, our belief that the animals of this planet are important and worth saving. So we try to bring all the subjects as much as possible through these six different um, themes throughout the year. So 
let's continue and see the K1 and K2 classes. Before we get there, always a stop. Um, just to show you that this is my office. Um, I, along with being the primary vice principal, I am the curriculum coordinator. So that program of inquiry that we just saw, I oversee that to make sure that what is happening in the classrooms from kindergarten one through grade five really is cohesive and makes sense. So that's where I spend some of my day meeting with teachers um, and working on curriculum. So, we've got a class of K2 learners here. And as you see, students are engaged in different um, learning. They may have um, times to work independently, and they'll have times to work collaboratively. Um, in the kindergarten classroom, we have a one full-time assistant and we have learning support. So learning support for students who need it will come in and support the children individually um, and help them to make sure that they are successful. We know that every child learns differently and we hope that equity is our goal. That the end game, only the students that um, really need it have to have it. So we'll continue into a K-1 classroom. And they're not here right now. Um, they're off into one, some specialists. And so with the K-1 classrooms, we have a few special features. Our K-1 classes um, have this beautiful lofted area where they have um, a space to have a house play. Underneath, they have lots of areas for building, um, construction, and um, as we are an urban school, uh, finding space can be a challenge. So this is one way that we've been creative about it, to have multiple levels of space for the students to think and learn. As we continue across, um, you will notice that the classroom doors between these two different classrooms is open. And it has the ability to close. There's times that um, teachers will want to bring the whole group of students together, and there's times when we'll just have our own separate things. We start from the top by making our environment um, as collaborative as possible. So we are kind of forced to think, how do we use this environment in a collaborative way? We know that many minds are better than one mind, and so we truly believe that with our teachers and our students. So all of the classrooms um, are opposite mirrors of each other. Um, and so there are two classes per grade level. And so this is the K-1, 4, and 5-year-olds. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of different centers in which they can engage, in which they can express themselves, in which they can kind of just show their uninterrupted play and, and what they are learning. Um, as a pre, as a early years program, we believe in um, the power of play. Play is the natural state for young children. And this is how they come to learn about the world. When they play, they start to formulate ideas. They test. They think about why the world is like it is, why my relationships are like they are. And they continue to reflect on that. We as teachers are able to see a student, take them where they are, and then give them a little bit of a nudge to push them onto their next learning level. While it may look like fun and games, and it is for the kids, and it, that is important, we're also watching them developmentally. We have a, a, a progression of learning, a developmental progression of learning, that is based on the um, ear, uh, key stages um, based out of the UK. But what this really says is that what should a four-year-old be able to do? What should a five-year-old be able to do? And how is it similar or different? We help every student develop individually in that way. So um, as we go across, we'll come and see the um, other K2 um, classroom. Um, and you'll be able to see that students are independently engaging in the, uh, their reading, while a teacher is sitting up front and able to have time for um, independent work. 
independent learning where they can guide and um, nudge students along in their journey. So this is a, a classroom of five and six year olds and as you can see that they are fairly independent already. Um, they are living our mission and vision um, and it, you can see it right here. So let's continue. Throughout the hallways and in the classrooms, um, you'll see helmets. And uh, as Japan is an earth earthquake prone country, um, having these helmets um, in the case of an emergency is very important. So that's why we have those. We're also fortunate to have another um, space for our littlest learners. Um, so this is called the multi-purpose room. And um, it's a place where they are able to take a nap in the afternoon, uh, the kindergarten one student, um, and have some free uninterrupted play. Um, a lot of the toys that you'll find in here have open purposes, open uses. So you can have a, a set of blocks, and those blocks might become anything. Um, they may become a rocket ship, they may become um, a house. Um, it's open-ended so students can be uh, developing their creativity, showing their interests, um, and expressing themselves through their play. Um, in kindergarten one, students will take a nap or be encouraged to take a nap after their uh, recess playtime. Um, whereas in K2, um, we're starting to transition students out of that um, necessity towards the grade one. So after lunch in K2, students will have the option for some quiet, um, personal time of solitude and just a chance to um, have a quiet moment for themselves. They're not in, they are not required to take a nap by any means, but some of them still do. Um, we'll continue up uh, to the third floor and on the third floor we will find some Japanese classrooms. We'll find the grade one and two uh, classrooms um, and some support offices. So let's go. So we're up near some of the Japanese classrooms um, and at TIS we are really proud of our Japanese program. Um, it consists of two very distinct parts. So one of the big parts is language acquisition. And in language acquisition, students who are not native Japanese speakers come to TIS and they learn a language. This starts from four years old. This is one of the things that makes us special and different as a primary years program school. So what we also like to think about our students learning is that they learn in a special different way, especially when they're learning a new language. Our language learning program is built on um, a philosophy that um, kind of mirrors how a child learns to speak their first language. While they may not understand everything right away, while they may not have the words to say it, a lot of times they can understand things. And so they learn to understand their learning, what's going on in the classroom in many different ways. So they will be thinking about how can we act it out? If we don't understand something, how could I say, how could I act it with my body? How could I draw it? What do I already know that I could connect to my new learning? And so this is um, how students learn to um, speak and play Japanese, uh, play with the, the language. Um, oftentimes we're in um, a circle formation where we are in small groups. Um, you can also see that um, students are using technology to express themselves here. So one of the um, ways we do this is through an application called Seesaw and Seesaw is a very powerful tool. Students have the ability to um, collect their learning reflect on it, um, and it is multimodal in that they could draw it, they could take a picture, um, they could um, take video, take audio, and express their learning beyond written means. What's really cool about this is it gets collected, um, and the staff or the 
parents are able to see this at home. So, you can know what the child is learning on any given day. The other part of our Japanese program is the language and literature program. Um, and this is for our native level speakers. Um, we want to develop them in a similar way to um, what is happening in the homeroom classroom for reading and writing. So at TIS, we are a Columbia College Readers and Writers Project School, which is a very special distinction um, that is only held by about five or six international schools outside of America. And so in this philosophy, um, we learn not just how, not just about reading and writing, we learn how to be good readers and writers. And we take those skills that we're learning in the home room and we match them to what's happening in the Japanese classroom. And this is really great, and it's, a power, it's powerful that students are able to use one language to help them learn about another language, and it goes back and forth. So they become truly bilingual learners. Um, let's continue and come and see the first and second grade classrooms. Why today? Um, and you can see that they are independently working and very curious of the camera, of course. Um, we've got the teacher coming around and having mini, mini conferences with the student, leaving them with a little nugget of information so they can push their learning to the next level. So how they're learning writing would have matched how, how they are learning writing in Japanese. So English and Japanese match up with that. Across the hallway is um, a second grade classroom. Um, and these students also are having time to work with their writer's workshop. Um, they're getting it towards the end of this unit and they're starting to publish their learning. Um, there's, publishing is an important part of the um, writing process, but it's not the most important part of the process. What is, is that journey from taking an idea and writing about it reflecting on how we can make this better, and then finally having something at the end that we can truly celebrate. So we work on many different pieces of writing throughout a unit, um, and usually publish only one, um, because that's what we believe is important, is the process of learning. It's never at an end. So we'll continue over to um, the other grade one and grade two classes who are similarly engaged in um, writing workshop. So lots of learning going on. Um, as a philosophy in the primary years program, we believe that students need to make meaning for themselves. You can't just tell a student something and they know it. So we get them to interact with their learning as much as possible. Um, here we have um, offices for some of our support staff. So we have an English as an additional language support uh, group and a learning support group. So students who are new to English um, obviously are in a, immersed in a class where English is the main medium um, for most of the day. Um, they also have a chance when the other students go learn Japanese to have a little bit of um, some very small group time with a teacher where they can focus in on skills that will help them be extra successful in the homeroom class. Uh, so as you come up the stairs, um, you'll first come into the music classroom. Students have music a couple times a week um, in a cycle and um, they are developing their skills as musicians, as instrumentalists, and as singers. Um, we have a lot of um, percussion instruments, so you may be able to hear some um, xylophones, 
And we also have um, a strong strings program. So starting in fifth grade, um, students will start to play the ukulele. And this prepares them for a future where they may play violin or other string instruments. And as we continue down the third and fourth grade hallway, we will first stop in a third grade classroom. So these students are currently working on their math workshop. Um, we're truly proud of our math program as well. Um, in math, we believe that um, certain things need to be happening. Um, if a student cannot make a picture in their brain of what they are learning about, um, the math that is happening, then they're going to struggle. So the first thing we do is make sure that they can make a picture in their brain of the maths. If I say the number two, a student should be able to understand that that's two things. Okay, so we develop conceptual understanding in our students. Um, and then we need them to be fluent. This is no longer just uh, drill, drill, drill. Um, we do this in a more fun and interesting way. A lot of times we help students to develop their fluency as mathematicians in their arithmetic through games. Um, games are a very um, motivating way for students to learn. And finally, once they have that conceptual understanding and once they have that uh, fluency, then we need to apply that. The true purpose of mathematics is that we are able to solve big challenging problems. The third graders of today will be the engineers of tomorrow, and so they need to be thinking about what are the problems that a mathematician might solve. In the same way that uh, Readers and Writers Workshop follows a mini lesson structure where you have a good maybe 10 to 15 minutes of upfront teaching, math follows a similar practice where we'll talk together as a group and you'll go off and try to solve some problems independently or in small pairings. So. Our math standards are based on the Common Core, um, and a part of that is not just the, the standards and the outcomes that we want, but it's the um, approaches to thinking mathematically that are truly important. Um, it doesn't matter whether you are learning to add or subtract, or whether you're learning calculus, there are certain things that you need to be able to do. You need to be able to make a model and show your thinking. You need to be able to communicate why this is what you're doing. You need to be able to justify and reason that your decision makes sense. Um, and we get the students to do this on a daily basis, to think not just about what the answer is, but how did they get that answer? How do they know that's the answer? And what do you do with that now? So, um, let's continue. Um, this fourth grade class is having um, a Japanese lesson up here. Uh, so, some of the classes are happening in those rooms downstairs, but also we'll have classes that are happening upstairs in uh, the teacher's classrooms. Um, so, this is a fourth grade group, um, and they are playing a game um, to try to learn their hiragana. Uh, definitely uh, something that is similar to mathematics where you need the fluency, you need to be quick at it, and there's a way more motivating way to do it than just memorization. So, um, let's continue. So what you'll see here in this fourth grade classroom um, is that the schedules have been aligned, so teachers have um, collaborative planning time at the same time. So when the kids are in Japanese, um, they, both teachers will have um, a chance to work together, to plan together, um, to share their collective knowledge as educators on how to um, make the learning for the students the best it can be. Again, many heads are better than one. Um, each week I will also have meetings with um, the grade levels just to make sure that what's happening per grade level um, is similar in the style of our teaching, our pedagogy, the way we teach, how we teach. 
and that it makes sense from the bottom to the top. What's written on paper matches what's happening in the classroom. So this is another third grade classroom um, and they are um, again having their mathematics lesson. Um, if we looked closely at some of their learning it might be an interesting thing to see. Um, what math looks like. It is not just numbers on paper. Um, it is much more um, thorough um, and thoughtful. Um, so we solve problems um, and we show our thinking through models. Um, and we can explain our thinking with words. We have strategies to solve complex thinking problems. So um, it's not just good enough to be able to do it, but you got to be able to explain it. Um, and make sure that what you're thinking is not just a recitation of memory, it's true understanding. And we have um, at the end of this hallway, um, the art lab. And so in the art lab students are um, encouraged to think creatively experiment with materials, and learn strategies and techniques for um, developing their artistic craft. Again, it's all about the process. Taking an idea, refining that and making it better, and then um, taking it to the next level into something that you're proud of. Here we've and got our K1 have. learners. They are wrapping up their learning for the day. They're independently accessing and returning their materials. Um, and they're getting um, individual feedback and um, learning all about line. Um, looking at buildings and thinking, what kind of shapes might you see? So, <laughs> very excited. All right. Um, and so if students are having a, a, a difficulty with something socially um, or emotionally, um, they might come and see the talk, the, the counselor. So she has an office over here. Um, she used to be on the first floor, um, but with COVID going on, we needed a little bit of an isolation room near the nurse. So temporarily displaced um, and in a confidential area that she can have conversations um, about challenging things with students. Um, she is also um, in charge of what we call social emotional learning. So um, we believe in developing the whole child. It is not a, just about reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. Um, it's, it's also about making sure that they leave TIS as um, good people, capable of showing empathy, um, and considering the feelings of themselves and others. So we have uh, a social emotional learning program that helps them to develop their skills to work in groups effectively, to think about their emotions, to manage anger and stress and difficulty, to solve their own problems, um, and really put those sorts of uh, psychological um, tools right in their hands. All right, so from here we're going to head all the way back down um, to the uh, first floor uh, where we began, and um, on the way, we will see some offices um, of the head of school and deputy head of school and um, the offices for the business administration side of things. So follow me. So I'll stop here for a second and um, show you that we are intentional in our learning. It's not just magically happening. It's starting with a plan. We want students to get here and we have outcomes. And then it's about how do we go from where we are to meet the students where they are and get them there. So a lot of times we have I can statements and an I can statement helps students to um, understand what it is that's expected of them. We want them to be capable of looking at their learning and assessing themselves in order to know where they've succeeded and most importantly, how they can push themselves to the next level. Um, so some of these techniques from art will be very um, uh, pro, uh, skills that are about observation. Um, they are something that's applicable to every sort of class. Um, and then there will be um, some things that are very art specific. But also this unit has information on collaboration, observation, um, and then re refining of the work. So we build these things in purposefully to um, develop the students as whole learners.
let's continue. So we're down here on the first floor, um, across from um, where we entered over here. And so um, we have a nurse, a full-time nurse, um, who is on, on duty um, throughout the whole day. Um, especially during COVID, it's been amazing having her uh, support and help and making sure that the choices we make are, are truly based on the, uh, the health experts' um, thoughts um, and understandings. Um, we have two offices of our senior leadership team. So um, Chris is our deputy head of school. Uh, he is from the UK and he has taught all over the world. Um, and so his office is right here. And next to that is Dan. Uh, Dan is our head of school, um, like Chris. He has taught over, all over the world, but he's also spent a lot of time in Japan. So he's originally from Canada um, and has worked um, in Yokohama. He has worked up in Hokkaido. And um, after a brief stint away um, in America and Switzerland, he's back um, to be uh, in Japan. We also have here um, offices of the business administration group. So um, everyone from making sure students are registered to making sure buses go smoothly to making sure that we pay our bills and how um, those get processed. Across the um, walls, you continue to see student learning. This isn't for um, the guests of the school. This is for students to be able to reflect on their learning and a lot of times um, they are involved in the process of creation. So um, next to this we have um, our admissions and accounting office, um, HR, um, just kind of an extenuation of the main office area. So um, I can take you on a quick tour of the library um, we have a, a robust Japanese um, learning section, um, books that um, the students can access on their own in their um, native language, um, if that's Japanese. But we also have plenty of books from many other languages as well. Um, our library is split up between fiction and nonfiction, and we have thousands and thousands and thousands of books that are continually updated. And um, especially with nonfiction, you got to have the most recent information, so some are uh, transitioned out. Um, the library is a space um, for learning as well. Um, our librarian. Um, sometimes we'll hold lessons here, um, but recently with COVID has been going into the classroom. Um, the role of a librarian may be different than what you are used to in the past. Um, yes, they need to organize the library and check out books, but we see them as our main research leader. For whatever unit we are learning about, we need somebody that can help us find the resources and materials that are going to make us most um, effective in our learning. Um, give us the best resources to um, excite us about um, what it is we are learning about. So that is our role of our, the librarian in, in uh, a PYP school. We'll take you quickly to the gym um, to see where the students have their physical education classes out to the track. And we will uh, then send you on your way. So follow me. All right, so we're here in the gym. Um, each week, each cycle, students have gym uh, two times, and they are um, spending time learning games, um, learning skills, um, and developing their gross and fine motor control skills. So um, our uh, PE department throughout the year, the students all have access to um, games of invasion, like soccer and basketball. They'll have a chance to um, play net games like badminton and volleyball. Um, we have a rock climbing wall that is used um, more in the middle school and for um, the um, after school clubs. Um, and in PE, we have lots of different um, activities and learning going on. We'll take you out onto the track briefly. Um, we're about ready to start our playtime for the morning recess break. Um, on the trek, we have lots of space for lots of groups. Um, we also have a, a 
big play structure for the kids to um, play on. So, thank you for coming to visit TIS. Um, the kids were happy to have you here. Uh, we don't often get visitors in these COVID times, so thank you for joining us. Bye.